Hey guys, welcome to Surf and Show. I'm Noel Salas, and today's surfboard review is on the Neckbeard 2 by Channel Island Surfboards. Now this is a pro model for Dane Reynolds, and the original Neckbeard came out in 2009. Now what inspired the making of the Neckbeard 2 is Stab's new film featuring Dane called the Electric Acid Board Test. Now Aaron and I got in the car, drove up to Santa Barbara, sat down with Britt Merrick for the inside scoop on the story behind the making of the Neckbeard 2. I highly recommend you watch that interview because I think you'll enjoy it. Now as we dive into this review, we're going to be looking at three boards. All three boards are custom, they're all the exact same dimensions, but they're in three different constructions. We have it in Spinetech EPS, we have it in PU, and we have it in EPS with the wood stringer and the medium glass on fins. Now the folks at CI wanted me to ride something similar to what Dane was riding in the Stab Electric Acid Board test, and I'm excited to talk about this review. We're gonna talk about the attributes, what it felt like under my feet, and we're gonna look at a bunch of waves together. So this is gonna be super fun. Get your favorite drink, sit back, and enjoy the show. As we dive into the attributes of this board, I wanna first mention that CI's website talks about this being that one to four foot board, and it does those wave sizes real well. It's got the low entry rocker, so it paddles good. It's a stage rocker here, making it very forgiving, able to get through the flat spots, and it has that quick get up and go speed. So those are things that we need for small waves. But as we get into the back here, there is a slight hip, so we got a little something to pivot off of, and we can keep it nice and progressive in the pocket because it has such a wide tail here, right? But the other thing that's really important is that it has a medium exit rocker. And one of the things that I noticed when I was surfing it, I was thinking with all that surface area, is it really going to be able to do what I want to do off the bottom and in the pocket? And to my surprise, it surfed not only good as a groveler, but it really surprised me in that two to four, even in the six foot range. So it's a combination of it's single concave, giving it tons of lift and speed. And then the, the slight bump or hip here, and then this tail, we're carrying that much surface area. This board was really fast, and it wasn't just fast. I felt like I had good flow on it. And there's something in my mind about seeing this big old chopped off tail back here, like it wouldn't have flow. I felt like it was gonna be rigid and kind of turn real abrupt. And I felt like I could do those abrupt, quick pop pivot turns, but then I could also come off the bottom and do big round turns and kind of blow the tail and throw it out. So the board really surprised me, and I think the attributes of this board, yeah, it shines in one to four, but I rode this board in well overhead surf, and it surprised me there too, and we're gonna talk about that in a little bit. Now I wanna talk about the three different constructions and what they feel like under my feet. We'll start with the Spinetech EPS. Now this is my third model, right? We've had the OG Flyer and the Rocket Wide, and I really like this construction for a couple different reasons. First, I wanna say that it's a bit stiffer, right? We talk about flex and springing in and out of turns, and the EPS offers that. But what I like about the Spine Tech is that I feel like when I'm on the bottom turn or top turns and I'm, and I'm compressing with all the speed and my weight, the board's loading. But what I like about it is I don't feel like it's, it's loading as much or as, as hard or far, but when it loads, because it's stiffer, it, it flexes me faster and I feel like it's giving me more consistency in my turns. So whether I'm on the sweet spot or not, I feel like it's a bit more predictable compared to maybe the EPS with the wood stringer. What I like about the EPS is this is gonna feel a little bit more like a PU. Why? Because they both have the wood stringers. This is definitely more lively. And what I thought was interesting is since this had a, the medium glass on fins, I didn't order this board this way. This is what CI did for me. And I would have never put a medium glass on fin. I would have done large because this is made for one to four foot waves. But what I like about this particular board is with these fins being glass on and it doesn't have fin boxes, I felt like this board had more flex in the tail than the Spinetech did. And it doesn't have any carbon hits on the sides here. So there was a great connection for me with this board. I also felt like because of all the surface area in the tail, that this board, even with the medium fin, generated a lot of speed. So this board felt great too. And 
it's not as durable as the spine tech the spine tech because it has the carbon here under the front foot you have less pressure dents now let's talk about good old faithful pu what i like about the pu is it's not going to have that chatter now i felt like the spine tech had less vibration while surfing compared to the one with the wood stringer and the pu what i liked is sometimes when when there's a riv in the wave or it has a ripple or like a side wave in it this board will really settle down the pu will settle down and i can drive through my cutbacks and what i love about this is its consistency and feel like for me we've been writing i've been writing pu's my whole life so to get on something like this it's like this feels like home to me now i've been writing a lot of eps lately and i really enjoy the extra spring and pop and when i put fins in this board i tried to compare all three boards with medium fins and i could not get the pop out of the pu to give me the speed and out of turns so i really felt like a medium fin in the pu did not have the pop it did not have the the spice in the turns so i put a large fin in that and that felt a lot better now i want to talk about the fins i chose since the folks at ci glassed on a medium fin with the Merrick template, I kind of felt like that dictate, dictated to us what we were going to use for the rest of the show in these two boards. And I'm good with that. This is a great fin template for me. It suits my surfing style. I like to carve a lot. So if we're looking at it, it's got that rake, right? So good carving, a narrow tip so you can get good release. And then the center fin's a little bit smaller, and that's going to keep the board nice and loose and playful. So I'm good with that. So what I did on the Spine Tech. Since they're both EPS, I wanted to use a medium fin as much as I could. So I started with the AM1 Honeycomb medium flex pattern fin, and it felt great. But every time I go to grab the spine tech to surf, because it's this board's turn, the waves were well overhead. And I initially wanted to just grab a large fin because I'm looking for a little bit more fin depth in the water, right? That'll give me more hold. Instead of doing that, I thought that won't be fair to this board. So I grabbed a different construction and I grabbed the tech flex now this is in the control series it's got less flex and more hold so I'm going to get better consistency in my turns and I thought okay let's test this and see if we're going to get that hold we're looking for and to my surprise I was shocked not only how good the fin held but also how good the neck beard 2 held out there now what I the reason I have all these fins out here is because both FCS and futures have a bunch of different constructions so if you want to generate speed i like that futures has this new one it's it's a beta fin and it's a vapor core series so this speed generating flat foil it's got some flex waves one to three feet this is a great fin it's sold out right now but this is coming i highly recommend it i like it they also make it in the black stick this is the am1 right v2 foil so it's a little bit different also a speed generating fin my point to this is we've got different flex patterns for different situations we've got bigger waves smaller waves we got lighter guys heavier guys it's a great template and you have all these op options now i like that futures has the speed generating but fcs they have the shaper series this is like honeycomb here which is going to be a little bit more comparable to this one over here right am1 in the honeycomb then you got the performance core and if you look at it that looks a lot like the rtm tech one right and what's new for fcs is fcs2 they have now they have it in the air core so this is going to be lighter and a little bit stiffer than this fin and i have this in the philippe toledo fin and i really like it so you have a lot of different options and flex patterns and instead of just grabbing a large fin i'm thinking shoot i'm going to try a tech flex I could also win with the fiberglass fin. So unlimited options. That's what I did on these two boards. Well, actually this board to compare with that board. And then on the PU, I went with a large fin. Now I did try the AM1 and it just didn't have the speed I was looking for. Still good hold, but it, it just didn't have that pop and speed in and out of turns. So I used the RTM Tech 1 and I really liked it. And this board felt great with this fin. So I'm calling the neck beard to a one board quiver. Let's look at one to two foot surf. Look at it's flat right there. Decent little turn projecting around that to get to that turn. I like the flow. Look, 
bottom turn, top turn, nice little wrap, speed the whole time. There it is, quick pivot, nice quick roundhouse, getting a little bit of speed. This is the glass on fin board. Look at the EPS, it's just, not, it's got a good spice to it the whole time. Now we're jumping into three to four foot surf. This is a, um, a great height for this board on top of groveling. Look at this down the line speed, hit this first turn, nice spray there, getting a little free on the tail, and then hitting this late but able to get up on top of it. Here's the PU just feeling solid in that turn. Here's the spine tech. I like the turns that it's, I'm able to do on it. And like I said, it feels really solid. I like the PU right here, nice turn, able to gain speed there. Now we're in five to seven foot surf. Glass on fins, board feeling really, really good. It's holding just fine with the medium fins and that wave was overhead the whole time. Here's a good size wave. There's some texture on the surface and the board still held in real good. This is the TechFlick medium fin. Watch the bottom turn, good hold there. Nice little top turn getting loose. That board just felt good. I, I really enjoyed surfing the spine tech in a little bit bigger surf. It challenged me. Nice turn right there. Watch the, the tail get loose under the lip. Real playful and a lot of fun. That's one thing I, I really like about this board. I believe it can handle bigger surf. So you get down there, you're wishing you had maybe a fever or an OG fly or something with a little bit more rocker. This board can, can uh, handle its own out there and I think you guys will really like it. So let's look at the constructions with flex and feel. I took three lefts doing similar turns. This is the EPS with glass on fins, smaller wave, boards pivoting well, good pop. This is a spine tech, similar turns, good combinations the whole time with good flow. Here's the PU. It's a little bit bigger wave, large fin, feeling good. You can see the turns are a little bit more drawn out. It doesn't have the pop, but it still goes good. So this is about progression and magic boards. The Neckbeard 2 had a lot of speed. I felt like it was throwing, always throwing a lot of water, and I just felt really super comfortable. What I normally do, a reverse, it was faster. I, could, I just felt more comfortable. Small sections, putting it on rail, and I just felt like I could do anything, or try anything at least, and where I get a quick turn and be able to get the tail to release, at sometimes other boards it can be harder. Or if I do a turn that I don't normally stand up, doing a turn like that and popping up, that's what I'm talking about. Magic boards are there for you and they push you outside your comfort zones and that's how the Neckbeard 2 felt for me. So where does the Neckbeard 2 fit in a quiver? I believe it does one to four real well. I believe it'll do up to six foot and a little bit above that after thorough testing very well also. So this is that one board quiver for me, and I highly recommend it as a groveler, a daily driver, even a high performance shortboard for intermediate all the way to advanced levels. Now, if you're asking yourself, which one did I like best? Well, there were certain things I liked about each, but if I have to narrow it down, I'm going with spine tech. Why? The flex pattern felt the best for me. I felt like it was lively, and I'd probably ride this board in one to six foot on a regular basis. So I'd want it to be a little bit more durable. So this spine tech is more durable than the, both the PU and the EPS. And the other thing is I'd probably order two of these because now I want a glass on medium in the spine tech and I'd also order one with boxes so that way I could mess around with the different fin templates. Now the other thing I would wanna do, and I know this is a big ask, but since Britt and I, and I've been talking about flex and tail a lot, and how carbon tightens it up, maybe half the carbon would be good, right? Take this half off, have it just back here, so it protects from my toe side and my heel side so it doesn't pop under here. That would actually give me more flex in the tail from here forward, just saying, but that's what I would want custom. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed today's review on the Neckbeard 2. I had a blast and it's a favorite for 2018 for sure. Look, if this board's not on your radar, it should be. Special shout out thanks to the folks at CI for sending these boards down for review. I had a blast. Look, if you like the show, subscribe. You can also find us at surfandshow.com. That's it for today. Until next time, see you in the water. Bye-bye.
But you want it You can go where you please With a heart inside Child, that's the only thing I see Hey, step away from that pit now, baby Ain't nothing but hell down there 